There we go. Why do my eyebrows look so angry? <laughs> okay, well, I guess we can wait a minute. Yeah, we can. Wait. Shows up. And in the meantime, I will go on to just to verify that it is streaming appropriately and that the that we're not having any lag. Oh, it doesn't seem to have kicked in yet. The stream hasn't? Well, we're live here, but it's not showing on here yet. Oh, it just started the countdown, like counting up. Oh, so it may so, have taken a second. So right, we might actually be live live now? Okay. Yeah, it's still not showing on mine yet. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's quite the lag. Yeah, I wonder why. Okay. It's quite the lag. Okay, it's not as bad now. It's catching up. All right, perfect. We're all set. <clears throat> oh, good. And Excellent. I guess to start things off, thank you to everybody who watched our recent review of Some 41's 13 Voices. I hope you enjoyed it. And we had a question that I'd like to get into, but we'll wait to see if we have anybody show up. But, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we can hold off on it for a minute. Um, we're almost done with the tour, actually. Just yep. a couple more weeks. We have Order and Decline next, and then their final double album. Now, are we, we'll have to figure out the timing on this mm -hmm. because we'll need time to listen through it, figure it out, listen, like get our initial thoughts and review it and every all the pieces so it may not come out i don't know like i mean we could do a live reaction, that's true but i don't know you know well, getting I, a video out and stuff that fast i don't know how possible that would be yeah well yeah we could always do an initial live um thought process so like after we've listened to it, do a live, short live, maybe 10, 15 minute live, go through, kind of give our thoughts. And then that would be our initial. And then we could continue from there and do an actual like full video review. Get this set up too. We're getting ready to live stream vertical as well. Um, so that way we can be rock and roll on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then that way, anybody that is on the vertical, if they'd like to join us, can come to the mainstream because that's seems to be, that's where the hours are counting. Cause I, I don't think we got any watch time from the vertical last week. Um, I think yeah, it, no, we did, did it, did it not, it didn't count like the shorts did. Did it count like a, no, it's, I'm pretty sure it's the public watch hours because it's on a short. Um, it's longer than that. So yeah, no, it, and it went pretty well. We had quite a few people yeah. drop in on there. Yeah, they did. They dropped in and commented and interacted a bit, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. so, I don't remember what my title was. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going. Um, if, from the 13 Voices album, what is your favorite song from the record? Um, leave us a comment. Uh, a couple people already have um, on the full video, or you can leave it here on the live in the chat. Um, if you're watching this afterwards, uh, definitely leave it in the comments below. Um, and then let us know what you think. Um, we would really like to hear. I know for myself, uh, for myself, I'm, if you've been watching the channel, you know, I'm a huge Sum 41 fan and uh, I don't want to spoil the video. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I don't want to say anything from the video that might ruin people watching the video. Um, but, uh, yeah, you should definitely check it out. Let us know what you think and what your favorite are and what's maybe what your favorite Sum 41 album is like where, where in history do you place yourself when it comes to the band? Where is your favorite era or your favorite album or song? I have a hard time deciding on that, actually, because for me, that really depends on how I'm feeling and kind of what I'm going for when it comes to the music I'm listening to that day. I, 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 there's not one that I can pick that I would say is my favorite album um, because I like them all differently. Sorry, I'm just getting this set up. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. In the meantime, I'll grab a drink. Well, I'm not like I'm not leaving. Like I have, <laughs> I have some water here. So okay. So let's see if I can plug this up right. Commercial. See if this works. And then if you wanna, you'll have to pop in the chat to say pop, where pop, they pop, are. Pop. So you might wanna get the link ready. And link to this live. Mm -hmm. Like to this live, you mean? Yeah. 
the horizontal. Copy, share, <sighs> copy link. Oh yeah, I forgot that this one was live. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of live streams are always kind of boring, but once we get into it, so if you're here and you've made it this far into live four and a half minutes in, stick with us because usually once our conversation yeah. gets going, we really get going, you know, fist flying. No, um, we get, we get good conversation going. Do you have that ready? No, not yet. Go live on there and see. How oh works. yeah, this is ready. I'm just waiting for okay. that to go live yep. so I can leave a comment. So there, now we're live to you. Yeah. Let's All right. I don't know, camera's not recording anymore. Okay. You can post the thing. Oh, cool. Um, okay, dokie. Okay. Just, just gotta figure just out. Me. You're gonna have to move it. There we go. Okay, move it this way. Okay, there. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Um, live. And then if you can do the copy the tags. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just trying to find the. Is there... You want me to do it in your studio? No, I did it before. Hold on. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, baby, I've got it. It's quiet tonight. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Uh, I have a funny memory on that song, but I can't share it here. It's inappropriate. It's not that it's... Okay, it's not that it's... An... <laughs> it's not that it's an inappropriate... It's not that it's... Here, inter... Let me do this while okay, you tell you your story. It's not that it's inappropriate. Um, okay, so <laughs> here's the thing. My dad didn't know that song. Um, and one day we were driving the car when I was a kid and it's playing along. I'm your Venus. And he goes, did that say I'm your, and since we're on YouTube live, I won't say it cause I don't like <laughs> the flag, but something that kind of rhymes with Venus. And I was like, what? No, that is absolutely not what, what it said. It said Venus. <laughs> I, I have no idea where he got that other idea from but anyway it's just that's one of my <laughs> favorite anytime i hear that song that's all i can think of is my dad saying that is that did that say this nope. no i don't think they'd be allowed to play that on the radio uh, at least at the, at the time that was like i don't know 17 18 years you ago you got rid point. of your chrome and i can't find it oh i did it on i did it on the app last time oh no i have to go into chrome to do this what i need to do i need the full one Oh, well, somebody has shown up in our live stream. All right. Hey, getting, welcome. We're just getting stuff set up. We're a little bit slow to getting things arranged That's tonight. Okay. Welcome. But Thank you welcome. for joining us. We have our live stream going on our main channel as well, which is a little <coughs> bit me. easier to see because the camera is positioned in the front. And yeah, so we're just doing a live following up our review on some 41's 13, 13 voices. voices. So if you're a Sum 41 fan, then you're in the right place. Or if you just like music in general. You're also <laughs> in the right place if you like music in general. <laughs> the channel is not just Sum 41. As much as we love Sum 41, and if you've watched the channel before, uh, they're my favorite bands, as I frequently tell people. But the music, the channel in general is about music, um, album reviews, um, new music. How did I used to say it? Because I had such a good rhythm to it um album reviews news history music music news history and album reviews is that how, yeah. music album reviews anyway if you like music this is the place to be we like um talking about music uh throw us down a uh, comment in the chat if you've if you've been here before awesome um yeah so we just reviewed uh some 41's 13 voices as we go through the discography tour if you like some 41 what's your favorite album um maybe throw your favorite song from the 13 voices album down in the chat. Oh, it's Carlife. Oh, hey, Carlife. Hey, it's good to see you again. <laughs> We're used to seeing you over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're still getting the two things figured out because the streaming software was not working on our computer. So we have the vertical stream on my phone and then the main stream, as usual, on the, you know, on the camera. So, yeah. But we got both of them running. So play. Play free bird. Oh my gosh. So I, there's a podcast I listen to called um, the ongoing history of new music. And it's by a guy who is a DJ. His name's Alan Cross. He was a DJ in Toronto for many years. And one of the episodes of his podcast, he actually took some time 
to go through and talk about different things at concerts, like people shouting out, play Freebird, like where those things came from. And I wish I could remember the history behind it, <laughs> but that's what, that's awesome. Uh, but he went through things like, like that, why people hold up lighters at concerts. And it was all, like those little types of details that people do at concerts that have just become kind of a part of the experience. He went through and talked about the history and where each of those things came, each of those things came from. I wish I could play Freebird, but unfortunately I can play like three notes on the guitar. She's a musician. <laughs> she could probably play it on the flute. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we tried the vertical for the first time last week and um, it's a bit of a learning curve because you have to time them. Like if we, if we could get the software to work on the computer, then we could just do it both and then, you know, set it all up, but it just, it, I don't know if made our computer crash is the right term, but it was kind of like, it was really, really pixelated and glitchy and whatever. So, yeah. Oh, they said I had to. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand. I 100% <laughs> yeah. understand. We're doing this because the phone's like at a bit of a distance. We could both be in there, but yeah, we can see the comments. So yeah. But to everybody who is here, welcome. That's I don't know awesome. how you found us, if you've seen us before, but yeah, I guess I'll get into, so one of the comments, can you actually pull it up and I'll yeah. read it? Now we've got like so many devices going, Perfect. but there was a comment that we got on our video that I kind of wanted to address uh, live because, uh, do you have it there? Mm -hmm. Just about. Okay. There it is. Yeah. So it was a comment by um, Alexander Jude 1306. And thank he you said, for commenting, by the way. Yeah. Thank you for your comment. He said, there's 32 ways you can die here tonight is a reference to Stevo 32, supposedly. No matter what D meant by that, choosing this number can't be a coincidence. And I do agree with that. Like, obviously, there is a, a coincidence there. But the reason I didn't get into that in the video is because so much of that is just speculation and gossip. And I didn't want to... I guess, promote that side mm. of things because there are so many, for Fears. lack of a better term, conspiracy <laughs> theories on what happened. And this was nearly a decade ago. And so at this point, it's probably best to just, you know, like, let it be, right? Like, I'm sure at this point, you know, they've moved on. They both have families. They both have lives. And it just wasn't something that I, I felt was necessary to get into because everybody does know who, you know, who is a Sum 41 fan, how obvious the that references because it was yeah because it was you know it was his the drum blatant. solo on their first ep right so which we talked there. about go check it out we yeah. we did a review about it it's if you have time definitely go watch that one yeah so it just but i felt that getting into that when there's no clear-cut answer regarding that but we did have a clear answer from derek on what that song really was about i felt that was more important to touch on given how many theories there are out there because he did very clearly state why he wrote that song how it came about and what that song meant to him and the fact that it is his favorite song to play live from that album so, yeah like, what well, Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry go no, on. go ahead. No, it's okay. You can go. I think one of the cool, <laughs> I think one of the coolest things about this album in regards to the documentation and the interviews and actually knowing what the songs are about, Sum 41 has always kind of been, they've been a part of the game when it comes to actually trying to make sure to use social media and YouTube and mm -hmm. stuff like that um, to promote their albums and to get backgrounds because they did a lot of that early on. Like I mean, that's one of the ways they got signed was just documenting what they were doing in life, playing pranks and, and things of that nature. And even though it wasn't always done necessarily well, per se, they continued to try to document their different albums. But because of the way things progressed so fast and how social media was and how easily it was, how much more readily available um, the technology was, it was easier for them to actually document what each song was yeah. about. Yeah, because in between the time of Screaming Bloody Murder and 13 Voices, like the internet and social social media changed a lot. It exploded. It was, you know, just a short period of time, but it, you know, it, it really went crazy and it, things were really not the same after. And I would say, you know, that was also around the time, like 2015 through 17 is kind of like the golden age of the internet yeah. when, you know, you could go on YouTube without ads. You can, you know, just music, everything, right? And it was easily accessible and there wasn't a whole lot of barriers to things like there is now. So it was a great time to be able to, re to uh, produce that album 
and to have that comeback like it just everything lined up so well in that regard like with the album's release and you know just the social media presence and just everything that there was so much like when I was going through the information, you know, I'm sure David could say the same, like there were so many interviews. It was kind of hard to choose because there was just an endless amount of content regarding this particular album, whether it was from, you know, I mean, just Derek alone, tons and tons and tons of interviews, but then, you know, there were interviews with the other members of the band as well. So it was just with this, like, there was probably so much more that we could have gotten into with this album just because of the amount of information. Yeah. But, you know, we tried to, I mean, it, the, the video is still, after cutting it down, was still <laughs> nearly... five minutes long. Four, no, it was 42 minutes and... Yeah, you know, nearly, okay. Nearly, nearly 43 nearly 40 minutes, minutes, right? But, you know, there's a lot of information in there. And the thing that I appreciated about it was that we could get into... Like, I love theorizing about the meanings of songs, but it's great when the artist actually tells you what they were about. It just, it had so much more meaning, I think. And I'm just going to try to read this. Well, the comment. beauty the beauty about it, too, is, like, even though we know what it's about, you can also, there's enough ambiguity in the song that you can utilize it if you connect with certain pieces of it, right? So that is definitely in the plans to do um, on just for anybody who pops in on the mainstream. What's it say? Um, the comment says, expecting a full album ranking from you both after you finish uh, all the breakdowns, including Heaven and Hell. And that is des definitely something that we'd want to do because I've definitely been keeping track. Sorry, I keep saying definitely. I've been keeping track of my personal favorites from all of them. And then also we've been tallying the, you know, which album is the heaviest and which, which song is the heaviest. There's been some debate on that amongst the two of us. <laughs> well, and I know there was a there was a remark I made in um, I'm just gonna take these off because of the glare. There was a remark I made when we did the Screaming Bloody Murder uh, review regarding the heaviness of that versus Underclass Hero. And somebody left a rather snarky remark about it on Reddit. And I don't know if they watched the rest of the review or not, but I think they missed my point. It's not that I was saying that Underclass Hero is a metal album or a hard rock album by any stretch of the means, but it was more of when we when I went back and listened through Screaming Bloody Murder, that album was actually a lot lighter than I remember it because a lot of the openings to the songs are heavier in their undertone and they are very dark sounding, but then it actually turns a lot more melodic and not light in the sense of pop. That's not at all what I mean, but it is lighter in sound, but it is backed by a heavier vocal from Derek. So it's a very different mix, but to me personally, just the, uh, the overall, you know, when you think of the speed and the, just the instruments and all of that stuff to me, after listening through everything up until that point, it did come across to me as a lot lighter in i guess not definitely not lyrical theme but just this the sound of it overall i guess is just to clear up that because it's not like i was saying that it was a you know like i said it's not like it's you know a heavy screamo album or anything <laughs> which one screaming bloody murder? no underclass no, hero I, well screaming bloody murder the heaviness that it that it comes to it's not heavy in the sense of metal it's it's definitely heavy lyrically but it's also heavy it's because it's not what you would consider a pop rock album, but it's it is heavier than just your regular rock music. Yeah. Um, and two, it, it ranges. The dynamics are so <clears throat> broad on that album because a lot of um, Steve O's drums on that record are a bit lighter sounding. They have a, a lighter sound to it. Whereas when you get into the later albums with um, 13 Voices and. Uh, <sighs> What's the last album? Order, Order and decline. decline. When Frank's on the drums, you get a much heavier drum sound, which I think in when I first listened to their new single Rise Up, I think one of the reasons I thought that felt so much heavier than their previous stuff, aside from I needed to go back through and re-listen to Chuck because I forgot how heavy Chuck was. Um, but because I think a huge part of the reason Sum 41 sounds so heavy now, aside from Dave being back in the metal elements, is the drum playing because... Yeah. Um, Frank's drum playing is so much heavier than Steve-O's was. Yeah. Even in Steve-O's, when they did Chuck, the drums were good, but the the heaviness from that album came from the guitars, not the drums. Whereas now their heaviness feels more, it comes from the drums, not so much yeah. as the guitars. Well, it's interesting too, when you watch Frank play Steve-O's songs, 
it sounds different, yeah. right? Because like he could be playing the same stuff, but his approach to it is so different that overall the song just sounds drastically different. And you know that's fine because they weren't you know they weren't written to his particular style or anything, right? So, but it is it's interesting how that kind of back and forth, you know, even Tom versus Dave, you know, their mm -hmm. their guitar playing, it's you know everybody's got their own little spin on it, and that's why you know it's morphed and twisted and yeah changed well over in, the years. in regards to the difference between steve-o and frank i was actually comparing a couple of their different videos and the different songs that they play that are so, that some of the the old songs that frank plays anyway i was comparing their two videos and <clears throat> uh, i think because of frank's background and the level of drumming that he's done he plays on a bigger kit there's a few extra mm -hmm. pieces to it whereas steve-o plays on a more of a traditional just what you would see in most places type kit but there's a few extra pieces that Frank has that I think add to the elements that he's able to play a slightly different style um, that kind of brings it a different level of happiness to it. Didn't you never put the link in the thing? Oh, I thought that's what you were doing. <laughs> if you if you're just popping in, we do have a full version, like a widescreen version on our channel right now of the live stream. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions or any thoughts or ideas regarding the um, you know, the Sum 41 album or our review or any questions you want to ask us, just feel free to pop them in the comments and we will read them and respond to them as quickly as we can. But sometimes we do get sidetracked, you know, talking, right? <laughs> but we do try to respond. Oh, Raymond. Yeah, he, he commented. That was the 13 album comment. Yeah. So he's just pinning the link to the, the main thing now. Okay, you can turn that off because hearing myself echo in that is weird. Yeah, so. I can turn the volume off. I'm just figuring out how to pin the comment. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. <sighs> I don't know how to pin it. Well, that's okay. Oh, how do I close it? <laughs> there we go. Got it. All right, good. The link there. Yeah, so that link draws to the the full, the, the, the wider. But I guess what we figured out last week was the the vertical and the horizontal both play to the the watch hours. So yeah. whatever you're more comfortable watching on, then uh, that works. Mm -hmm. If you see us kind of shifting back and forth, um, since we've been talking to this way, the people, if they watch this one afterwards, they're going to see their level <laughs> of profiles. Yeah, well, until we can get that other thing set up where we can do it both at the same time, have one camera, one chat box, but it's it's such a learning curve. Yeah. And it's, you know, well, with everything else going on, it's kind of hard to... Well, and we haven't really had a chance to test it yet. Maybe, maybe tomorrow night. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway. No, I did test it, and then when we went to use it, it didn't work. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we'll I figure that out. But that night, it was surprising that we actually got on as quickly as we did after the fact because it oh, was we had, we had so such many a technical issues that night. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Well, I've been talking a lot. So. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, 13 Voices, I think, is probably the album that I've listened to the least. Not because I don't like it, because it's a very good album. But I think a big part of when that album came out I was super excited at the very beginning when they first announced it and I got to listen to the couple singles, but when they released it, we were in the middle of a move. So oh, yeah. they had released it around the same time that we had moved cross country. And at that point I, I had bought it, I had listened to it and I had a copy of it and I was super happy to have it, but then I didn't get a chance to really just listen to it on repeat. And now it's missing. Yes. The CD, the, the CD, CD version, this, my CD Obviously version is, vinyl. yeah, my, <laughs> my CD version is now missing, but I, it was nice to be able to like go through and review and talk about this one because I was able to listen to it multiple times and get a better feel for, for a bunch of the different songs, like the fall and the rise. Or is it the rise and the fall? So the other way around. It's the fall and the, the rise. fall and the rise. I forgot what a good song that was. Like no, it was guessing. It. Oh, let's, let's take a look and see. Ugh. Yeah. It's the fall and the rise, right? The fall and the rise. Yeah. yeah. I should know this, but anyway, yeah, the, I forgot what a good song "The Fall on the Rise" is because it hit like that. It just an album that I'm just less familiar with. I'm more familiar with of the newer era of Order and Decline because that one, when it came out, I listened to it quite a bit. See, except "War," that's a song that I've heard a lot, but I mean, that's 
Well, it's a good. That's one of the like honestly, that's one of their best songs on the album. And then, yeah, and the music, breaking the chain. The music video for War, I think, thinking is your playlist. <laughs> What's that? Just thinking of your playlist, some of the things that you've played repeatedly. Yeah, well, there's certain songs that really stick out that I really enjoy that over a period of time. Especially there's certain ones that I think are universal for people because especially things like War and Breaking the Chain. When you come to your year cycles and you have New Year's and people have their New Year's resolution, those types of songs are the kind that people yeah. can utilize for coming like having their new year start right so everybody every year everybody has their new year's resolution well i can do this different i'm gonna do this different i have this new place set this new thing set in place so then you have war and breaking the chain which are about moving on in life and breaking the past and doing something new and moving on and and fighting your old self in that regards um they're very useful in those types of things so i think they are more um universal for most people um, then some of the more personal songs where some of them can be more about um, things that not everybody's going to go through, right? So one thing I wanted to put out there is if anybody has any questions or thoughts that they were wondering in regards to Sum 41 or the next album that we're going to review, it'd be great to know them because then it's like an area of you know research that I can focus on, see if I can find the answer, and then we could always include it in the video or mm. get back in the live stream, and I just thought that would be, you know, like a, if you had one question that you could ask the band members, what would it be kind of thing? And you can even throw it down there now if you're watching. So, yeah, it'd be a, a fun way of yeah, absolutely. doing some research. Throw, even if we do it like afterwards, like in the after we the review live. Heaven and Hell or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because we once we do the and this might be a good in between video or in between video, too, as we work on the Heaven and Hell, um, because the we're going to we're going to probably do a final video like you're asking about um organizing them from best to worst and and whatnot and talking about that piece Not of it. worst. Well, yeah, like <laughs> the, best the, and the, least best. The, the best and least best. <laughs> um yeah, the a final kind of conclusion video, I mm -hmm. guess. And I don't know if that'll come before or after because depending on the timing, but definitely we'll want to do a video yeah. like that. Ranking the album. We also have, I can't say what it is, but we have something super exciting coming in a few weeks. Um, really exciting, uh, especially for us. Like we're super pumped about it. <laughs> he and... got me off, track, off guard for a second because I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not going to say what it is because it's going to be a surprise. But yeah. uh, we have something for the channel that's going to be really exciting in, in, a, in a few exciting. weeks. Like, So we're super pumped about it. But yeah. anyway, the uh, we'll make an announcement once we have solidified a few things surrounding it. But yeah, so really, really cool things coming to the channel very soon. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. But um, yeah, so yeah, if you ever have any questions, you can always shoot them in the comments um, on any of the videos as well, because um, they'll they'll send to us. They, you know what YouTube needs? YouTube really needs, because I had my email on there for a while, and then I removed it because it was a bad idea. But um, they need a, like an inbox spot yeah. where it's like, contact this person, where it's just within YouTube. You know, so that way you can, but I, I could, I guess I could see that could probably get overwhelming. That could be overwhelming for people who are big YouTubers. Well, I know that's like, I guess like with people. AJ on the Y files, right? He has a separate website where mm -hmm. they have like that, con the specific, you know, contact thing for ideas. The idea. Yeah. The recommendation channel. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, no, yeah. We're going to be finishing up that. And then next will be, I've decided the next history that we're going to be working on after Sum 41 and is going to be Tenacious D. So that's the next thing coming up, which is kind of fun because they also, Tenacious D and Sum 41 did a, mu a Christmas song together <laughs> way back in the day. So, I mean, that, that kind of, I guess that kind of fits along. Um, and then after that, yeah. So anyway, but yeah, we're working towards a few, we have a few things in line coming up for the channel. So, but a few more weeks, a few more weeks on Sum 41 and then we'll move on to the next things, but. Yeah, and for you, those of you watching, I'm just curious, where are you guys from? Are you from Canada? Are you from the States? Because generally we have a lot of uh, Canadian viewers because I guess since we're based in Canada, but it'd be interesting to know where you people are from. So just, you know, you can drop that in the comments too. Yeah. Yeah. Country is fine. You don't have to put city. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to like your whole address. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and on the minute. <laughs> I, I, don't, I can never say that word. And. In um in anonymity. Oh Norway. Wow. wow, that's awesome. That's cool. That's really neat. 
would have never expected that. Yeah, it's cool, cool because we have like, because I've even seen that we've had, uh, we have viewers from like Russia and Indonesia. So it's kind of cool like to see how far our reach is. Um, but yeah, that's the first time that we've ever had anybody from Norway. like from, not from North America in our chat. So that's yeah, that's kinda, cool. That's I follow, cool. I follow a few Norwegian channels on uh, Instagram. <laughs> so I guess it kind of makes sense that <laughs> some people, you know, some people from Nor from Norway would, uh, come to a Canadian channel. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. dead spots in live streams always. Dead spots in live streams are really weird because <laughs> usually, I don't know, I don't know if it'd be weirder on a live stream or in person because dead spots in real life are also strange too when there's that moment where you're talking for a while and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah. <laughs> is, is the time difference, is it five hours there? For five, Norway? six hours? Yeah, what is the time difference I there? I think it'd be probably early morning right now, right? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I know. Because uh, when we went to Europe, like Hungary, Germany, is it uh, six during some times and five during other times of the year? I don't remember. You don't remember? Hmm. And then I know, same with <laughs> Japan, they are 12 to 13 hours ahead of us, depending on the time of the year. Oh, wow. It's 3.30 a.m. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you welcome for joining to, us. Welcome so to joining us. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it's, it's, like those, it's like those memes where it's like, tonight I'm going to go to bed early. 3.30 yeah. in the morning. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to try to figure out like a good time to, to set the streams for. Because we normally, like for us, just the way our schedules are, this just happens to be the night that we're both home at the same time everybody's all the little people are in bed so it's just easier to children yeah <laughs> <laughs> i figured i better specify children we don't have a bunch of little people that are in yeah, our house a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> oh, no yeah and it's just you know it's quiet it's you know i but it's also then you know we used to live on the west coast right so yeah. then it's thinking about that if we get an earlier stream then on the west coast it's like way too early so well it's hard because it's a weird thing to navigate well it's like when um mxpx would have their lives sometimes they'd have them at six which would make sense but then sometimes they would have them later which was hard for us because then it was super late for us yeah. to be able to right so it's then when you're on the East Coast and you want to think about the West Coast, you don't want to like be too late for us, but then you don't want to be too early for them. And then, yeah, it's, yeah. well, that's the nice thing though about the lives also being able to be recorded as well, because then afterwards, if somebody is apt to watch our channel, right. then they can always. Watch yeah, we do get a too. decent amount of views like on the live streams after the fact. Yeah. So like right now, nobody is on the main one, which is weird because normally people show up there. So. Yeah, usually we have a kind of a split. Is it so, even showing up? Or yeah, it I is. It's on the I it private. It. No, I checked it. It's there. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's awesome to yeah. have have the. I'm super pumped for the vertical because I think it's going to be something that's going to be really neat because we usually get a, a lot of people um, for our shorts. Mm -hmm. Like our 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 full length videos are starting to gain some traction, but the uh, the shorts are really really where we get a lot of our views from. Yeah, and it's a weird thing too because it's not it's not even that people don't click on them. It's that when they're shown, people click on them yeah. and they watch them, but YouTube doesn't show them. <laughs> so, I don't know, it's hard to try to figure out how to get that to work, but Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um <laughs> the yeah, so but anyway. I have a heart like my favorite songs from 13 Voices is really hard. I like I think it really depends. Theme wise, I really love War and Breaking the Chain and Twisted by Design. Mm -hmm. Overall, sound wise, I really love 13 Voices. I think it's it's probably their best album. When it comes to quality of songs, I'd say it's probably their best album on or their best song on the album. Mm -hmm. It's just done so well. Um, and it ha it has probably has the most dynamics of all the songs. Hi, Alan the Clown. Welcome. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's, good we, to have we, you here. it's good to have you here. <laughs> we also have the vertical going again, but we had a little bit more success setting that up. Yeah, so. a lot more success, yeah. actually. The, yeah. We didn't have any technical difficulties this week because we didn't try to do anything different. We ended up <laughs> we just, just doing everything normal, kept it the same. Yeah. That way we could be here on time and have a proper video yeah. and just be able to enjoy the time. Yeah. 
So, but it's good to have you back again yeah. this week. Thank you for joining us. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for me, for 13 Voices, it's hard for me to pick a song because there are so many that are done well. Whereas, like, last week, it was easy for me to pick which ones were my favorite just because there were definitely songs that stood out on that album, and that was Crash. Mm -hmm. And um, now my name, the What Am I To Say? That's a good song. Is that, is that the one? Now what I can't remember. What am I to say? But, um, Yes. I think that was the one that I said. No, I, I don't know. All the name title, all the name titles, all the name titles, all the titles are just Chapter like titles. in my head now because it's been like rapid fire with this. So, yes, um, I've never been good with like song names, like album names. I'm pretty okay with for the most part, but song names I always have a hard time with mm -hmm. because I know a lot of times I can tell you the course, but especially period of time especially in the early 2000s the names a lot of time did not match the song yes. where like i think i think it was fallout boy they have that song where it's like of all the gin joints and all like this long title has nothing to do with the song like not even remotely <laughs> like close the um crayons can melt on us for all i care yeah the reliant k song yeah yeah, and it's, yeah. the but that was the time period though a lot of the, a lot of the early 2000s songs would have long titles that don't have anything to do with actual lyrical content of the song. Well, yeah, Sum 41 did that up until Underclass Hero. Yeah. And then so far of the last two albums, they've also had themes that go along with what's going on. And they've also had like the title yeah. tracks. So they even shifted direction. Yeah, that. that's actually, that is one thing that they moved closer to was actually having title tracks. Um, they didn't do that with uh, Order, Order and Decline. Decline. The Order and Decline did not have a title track. That's okay. The um, it was that's a good that's a good album. I can't wait to get into that album that album next week. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm curious what songs from this album from some 41's 13 Voices are your favorites. You could drop them in the comments because we'd love to know that kind of stuff. Sometimes it? you look at me and I'm not sure if it's like you agree with what I'm saying. Oh, I'm just listening. <laughs> Oh, that's okay because it's the, always funny. At, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's always funny editing the videos because the way you just like stare sometimes. That's okay. <laughs> that's right. Because there's times where we'll be talking and then I'll be talking and saying whatever I'm doing, and she'll be looking at me and I'll be like, "Like, are you wanting to say something? Or you disagree <laughs> with what I'm saying? I don't. I don't know. What was I about to say? I don't remember. Oh, like how I in the video I cut you off and I accidentally forgot to edit that out. No, 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 I was saying something before that. Before, no, uh, sorry, that was back to what I was saying. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, 13 Voices. Oh, because I had asked about everybody's favorite songs off of that album. Oh, why is it called Dropping It in the Comments? I wonder. Hmm. Because. Well, maybe because there used to be like comments boxes. I don't know. I don't know. Like a show? Leave a comment in a box? Drop it in the comments. Fake my own death. So Alan the Clown said, fake my own death. I had on repeat when it dropped because it's been a long time since we heard new Sum 41. Yeah, that was a good song. I love the music video too. Like uh, that's one thing I said in the video. I was really <laughs> yeah. sad at how many of the cease and desist videos they had because the music video was so much fun and all the pieces to it. Just, I really hope, you know, it'd be really nice is if they did what they did with um, their all the good shit record, because when they released that on CD, their greatest hits up to that point, they also released a bonus DVD inside the jewel case as well that had all of their music videos up to that point so that would really be nice if they did that because then you could pop it in and watch it without all the blurs kate max says because it's below you guys well to us it's actually beside us <laughs> but yeah i don't know it's it's just one of those things that english is just such a weird has so many weird expressions below. right yeah, yeah oh below. yeah, yeah that does make sense that I, yeah because below drop yeah. Okay, I get that. All right, that's fair enough. I I love things like that where it's just like, okay, so things where there are certain phrases and where they came from are so curious to me because sometimes they make sense and other times they don't. That one makes sense. I can I could see that one. Yeah, I wonder if that's something sorry to Yes, we do. One hundred percent. Yeah, because the first one was fantastic, especially when they dropped there's that word. Uh especially <laughs> when they added in the uh the song always when they released the first all the good shit that was really good because that song too i went and re-listened to that recently and i forgot how good it was because i remember at the time 
it, it didn't seem that great to me. I was like, it wasn't that I didn't like it. It was just like, oh yeah, it's a good song. But then re-listening to it, I forgot what an actual fantastic song their song always was. And it's 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 one of those things that you go you don't really fully realize until you go back to and, and listen to. And Raymond says that his favorites are Breaking the Chain, Goddamn I'm Dead Again, and mm -hmm. Fake My Own Death. Good yeah. songs. Good songs. <laughs> the whole album is a good yeah, song. Like, like, <laughs> I know. This one for me is hard to I think hard to narrow it down. But yeah, with Fake My Own Death, that's because that was the one that when he wrote it, he knew that was instantly that that was the one that was going to be the single. And so it just it makes sense that that's one of the yeah. ones that, you know, people well, love so much because of the memories associated with it. I remember listening to it because when it first came out, because I remember they announced it and then they released it. And then I listened to it on the way to work that day. And it was I was so excited. I said this in the video. Like I was so excited to finally listen to it and just the sound was amazing because it was different. It was, it was something, it sounded completely unlike anything they had done in the past, but it was going back to a similar Chuck era because at the time I, there were for the longest time, the Chuck era was my favorite Sum 41 era. I really loved their, their metal phase um, to have that heaviness come back again was super exciting for me. And now, now years down the road, I kind of have, it's more of, I have more of a broad, like liking for their different pieces it really depends on the mood i'm in for for what i'm looking for i actually really enjoy the uh, like the i guess the musicality of there will be blood like it's very upbeat and fun yeah. and quirky and you know like when he does like the um if I am your king, then you'll be my fancy. It's yeah. just like a weird little, I don't know. Well, and I, I, I remember when I first ever tried figuring out what the song There Will Be Blood was about, typing it in. And there's that Daniel Day movie. I think it's Daniel Day. Call, there's a movie called There Will Be Blood. Oh. And I looked through, <laughs> I watched some scenes from it and looked through to see if there was any lyrical, con like any themes that ran along with the lyrical content of the song. And they're not even remotely connected. Oh. <laughs> So, well, because, yeah, because yeah, like Derek did, with dirty faces. Cause Derek, um, did a lot of watching TV and movies and stuff like that and drew themes from different things. So that's why I was like, oh, I wonder if this could be something that he drew from. Oh. And see, for me, the, the message for that, like the overall message for that was very obvious. Well, yeah, but I was wondering where the inspiration would have come from. Oh. That, that was my main thing mm -hmm. for looking for it was kind of because I, like, yeah, the, I mean, the theme and what it's about is very clear, but like where that came from was more where I was, what I was curious about. Yeah. And then I think Murder of Crows too is also very interesting musically. That one, just the way that the opening and like, it's such a, it definitely creates like visual, mm -hmm. you know, that's like when I was listening to it again, the idea for the opening of our video this week just kind of like instantly came to me hearing that and just all of the stuff. I was like, this is like perfect because you can hear, you can hear his like experience and the sadness and the anger all coming out within that intro. Yeah. So for the, the Sum 41 videos, I don't do any of the editing. Stephanie does all the editing. So <laughs> I, when I got to finally watch the finished product of this video, I was super excited <laughs> because I loved that intro. I thought it was fantastic. Um, <laughs> But because I had no idea, like we had when we first discussed it, we had talked about, all right, well, we'll read this and then maybe we'll shoot up some pictures of of articles and whatnot of when Derek was in the hospital. And that was as far as we talked about it. And then she had an idea in her mind, didn't tell me what it was, and then kind of teased it a little bit with me. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But then she did the whole thing, put it all together and then showed me the finished product. And it was, I loved it. So <laughs> my, my reaction when I first saw it was probably about as genuine as anybody else when they first saw it. So, well, one thing that you did say though, was that the, um, when I was talking about the, he wasn't sad, he was angry. And then you said that Thing from Ragnarok <laughs> popped in your head, so I did end up throwing that. Like I made a little. Uh, Thor is sad. Yeah. I'm not sad. I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> so I did add that because I saw the smirk that he was talking about. I was like, oh, okay, so this is what he was talking about. Yeah. The... Do you want to read that yeah. comment there? Uh, Elf Tower ninety says, "I heard the singles, uh, wasn't impressed, but yours and Amazon reviews to make me revisit the car." Oh, cool. cool. In the car, yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. The. Uh, it's it's interesting when you've listened to something for the first time and you don't i remember when my chemical romance released their song uh welcome to the black parade or black parade whatever i can't remember which how much of the title is actually anyway 
um, their Welcome to the Black Parade song. When they first released it, they released a, they did it live on TV and they did this whole thing with a children's choir and I didn't like it <laughs> at all. But going back later after they had released it on the album was so much better than when they had done it live and their initial unveiling of it. So I, I 100% feel that when it's at first you're not impressed with something, but then go back and do listen to well, it. Well, that was like with me with some of Sum 41's earlier stuff, because like I've loved Underclass Hero. for mm -hmm. I mean, that came out around the time that we met and stuff, too. So it was just more, I guess, you know, in my yes. radar than the other stuff. And then going back and listening to like, I was so impressed when we went back and listened to Half Hour of Power, because I and this is one of the things like coupled with you know, my thoughts on Underclass Hero being that punk rock opera, when I went back and listened to Half Hour Power, like, I was just so impressed with how well done it was. Because a lot of the times when you listen to, um, like, especially in the 90s, you know, the punk bands, like, first recordings, like, albums and stuff, they're not generally like produced very well like the quality like you know it's an it's okay to like listen to but i was like these guys are like really talented like they were so young and they did such a good job and so yeah i definitely like get that it was one of those things that going through these reviews i've enjoyed these albums way more than i thought well I would. it's like when you listen to early blink 182 and early yeah. bowling for soup like their first albums like their like demos and first recordings that they had were not great <laughs> and you some bands like that it's just like how did they get big like but their later stuff was fantastic yeah. and once they were signed and they had some polish put on it is really good but there's some bands you listen to their early stuff and it's just like how did this make it anywhere but it's i guess that's when you have a good ar person mm -hmm. somebody who's able to look at a band and say you know what they have potential they just need some fine tuning and maybe somebody to guide them along the way right mm -hmm. well that's why i like when they had their original singer which his name is escaping me at the moment, John. Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Sure. Um, <laughs> John Marshall. Like the fact that somebody was able to see their potential and see Derek's potential with writing songs yeah. and stuff, despite how things sounded so early on, and then to see where they started versus, you know, where they went. Like it's really, it's such an amazing journey. And it's great that they've been able to keep on for so long. Cause it's like, you know, with the Beatles, their career was so short, but they impacted music forever. Like they literally changed music history forever. Like yeah, really. there was there was a lot of stuff. But then when you see how much they changed history, and then you go back and look at how short their career was, it's almost mind boggling, right? Because then you look at some forty one and where they started and how long their career has been. You know, that's like equally mind boggling, but mm -hmm. in a in a different way. And it's just it's weird how you know I guess. I don't know if it's because of like technology, social media, all of that stuff that careers these days, music careers that are long, I don't know, it seem to be shorter because everything's so fast. I, I don't know. It's a weird. It's well, everything's <laughs> more drawn out now. When the Beatles were doing their things, they put out album after album after album after album, right? It was, they put out a whole bunch of stuff in that matter of 10 years and they toured so much that it seemed to last longer and to because of the lasting effect that it had on music and music history because things changed so much changed with the Beatles and because of the Beatles that people are still discovering them and loving what they're doing today. Whereas band bands that came out in the nineties, early two thousands that have had these long 20, 30 year careers. Um, they, some of them in the early days may have put out an album, album, album and done touring, but now it's, you have an album a couple years away, and then there's another album a few years more yeah. whereas before it was like every year you had a new album whereas now it's if back then if there was three or four years between an album there was a oh they, are they still together are they on hiatus <laughs> whereas now it's just oh yeah they'll eventually put out a new album yeah. come down the road time also just seems to be a weird mush now though yeah like when you think of like i guess how long it's been since order and decline was released yeah 2019 it's been Five, five years, years. <laughs> jinx you owe me a soda <laughs> but yeah it's just it's a weird it's, i don't know it's weird to think about things like that sorry there is something in my eye dry ball uh, ha 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 were you did you have a thought you were finishing i don't know this thing in my You're talking about time frames i don't know i got so distracted by whatever is in my eye. well and COVID sorry. really um 
changed a lot of things too because oh, well, there was, was there was that yeah. blank space right whereas now there's bands everything's kind of rebooting right because last year a whole bunch of bands were putting out new albums and this year everybody's touring which sucks because yeah, <laughs> it's not like oh a band's coming you can go to the show a little while later another band's coming now it's everybody's coming like within just a couple months of each other whereas my bank account you can't yeah. you can't afford that well um, we don't even really live near anywhere that you know it would be such a production to try to yeah go to actually go to, to a show a bunch of different concerts because you yeah know, it's drive a distance everything's so far <laughs> yeah but even still like I, there's other people i've talked to that, that don't have that issue and they're having the same problem where it's like last yeah, year everybody released albums how do you choose which bands you want to go see or which artists you want to go see like i remember when we when me and me and our son went to go see silverstein and we were at the at the venue they had a list like they had their calendar up and they'd show who was coming. It's like, that's a good band. That's a good band. That's a good band. And it was just like, I can't just keep coming back and watching all these things. Like if I lived across the street, sure, whatever, no big deal. But it's like, how do you pick which ones you're going to actually take the time to go see? Right. Oh, yeah. like, and we've been waiting for time. some 41s for a while. We've been waiting. for them. There was so many times where we'd live somewhere and then we'd move and then they'd play there. And then it was like, well, it's strange to me, too, how many bands aren't coming to Canada, though, because um, like Newfound Glory just recently announced that they're doing their 20 year anniversary for their Catalyst album and they're going to do a tour for it. But it's all U.S. based. There's no Canadian dates mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, even when Canadian bands all the times, they don't do Canadian tours that I find even more weird. Yeah. Like Bowling for Soup's coming to Canada, but they only have like four dates. We're still waiting for MXPX to announce Canadian dates. Um but yeah, and I think I, Bowling for Soup ones, I think, ended up getting sold out, if I remember correctly. Or they're close to being sold out, which is too bad because I want to go to one. But. Well, I think there's the whole nostalgia of, like, you know, throwback to 90s and whatever. So a lot of the bands that we grew up listening to are, like, making a comeback and stuff, too. So I think that's probably pushing all yeah. of that, too. Well, it's hard, too, because sometimes some of the different, the different um, like bands that are making comebacks they all have families so they're not going on these long drawn out tours they're doing four or five shows at a time and then they go home for a month or two and then they go out for another bout of four or five shows right they're not doing these tours where they hit all the spots at one go they're doing it in little bouts because they want to spend time with their families right uh elf tower 90 says difference is black parade is an amazing song and figure on death is tired and hashed out sad but true in my opinion I like landmines though, and a twist of fate seems possible. All right, fair enough. Yeah, everybody has their own opinion. That's okay. Um, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. The See, Micah, I, my, I didn't have that. Blah, blah. Yeah, blah, blah. What's the other one? They because what was the third one? Uh, oh, which one? Rise up. Rise up, the third single. Yeah, that like from initially hearing. I'll have to go back and listen to that now after having been through their discography. But to me, that was kind of like hit or miss. I did like landmines because of how old school some 41 it was and then waiting on a twist of fate too like i really i just i really loved that one just because of the just the energy and all of that stuff but then also see i have some theories about these songs but i don't know if it's like bad to like share that kind of stuff but like to me when i i watched these videos on 0.25 speed because like i'm i'm a nerd okay so i look for the easter eggs and when you actually like process the landmines video, it's actually really touching because you look at who they've cast as the each one to represent the four different kids, like when they were kids. And the interesting thing is when it goes, it's near the end when they're at the prom and everybody freezes. Okay. Derek goes into the crowd and the kid he does the whipped cream smash thing to is the one that is the steve-o character and it's the only kid that he interacts with, with the whole music video and so there's been little things like this throughout like i'm like they kind of like dropping these little like hints here and there same with in rise up right the reference to the parrot mm -hmm. that you caught being on board there's just there's so many little things that kind of like hint at steve-o and then when i watched waiting on a twist of fate and i saw that in the credits they didn't credit anybody for the robot but they did for some of the other extras and i was like this guy looks like steve-o but i don't know so that's just me being crazy and hopeful and you know and then now this weekend at the they're both at that festival in japan too so yeah Punk oh, spring. 
yeah. Here, I'll read this but one yeah, here. the uh, the Black Parade is an amazing song. I recently, within a few months ago, went back and watched the original live release that I was curious about if I if it was just if I would think differently about it now. But still, that performance of the live release, I just I, I it didn't do anything for me. But the recorded version, and I would have I would imagine their live version. I can't remember if they they did it or not when I saw them live ten years ago. But the the recorded version is an, it's an amazing song from start to finish. Um, yeah, so you can I'm go just gonna, ahead and do that. Yeah, I'm going to read this. So, because Raymond said, living in Norway, bands like Sum 41 rarely come here. So, I have to go to Sweden or even the UK to see some of the bands I like. Yeah, that would, oh, that wow. would suck. <laughs> that's, that's a bigger <laughs> trek. To be that far away. That's a bigger trek than we'd have to. Make. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, that's... for us, we have to go to Toronto, which is about, depending on the day, three to four hours or away. five to six yeah. sometimes. Um, um, yeah, but so the, it's, it's not like, it's a pain, but it's not that bad. Oh, hold on. Was a, the time I got to go see Sum 41 in Stockholm was actually by accident because it was originally a Blink-182 show that got canceled, but Sum 41 stepped in and the show was, how would you say that, lit or fire? Lit <laughs> or fire, either one. It was a lit De fire. Depending on your generation, one generation would say lit and a different one would say fire. I think yeah. is how it That's works. cool though. There was a there was a time he was gonna go to a Sum 41 concert and he showed up a day early. No, that was Gob. I went oh, to, it was Gob? I thought I went, it was Sum 41. Yeah, I went to go see Gob in Toronto and I showed up the, a night early after I'd paid for parking. <laughs> like I got there and I was just like, ah, oh, you know, I waited, waited, went and paid for parking, and I'm waiting near the venue. And nobody's lining up. Nothing's going on. I said, like, what in the world is going on? And so I got some internet and I checked it on my phone. I was like, oh, I'm here on the wrong night. It's tomorrow night. <laughs> so I went home, surprised her because she was getting my birthday present ready yeah. um, or Father's Day or something like that. And so then she wasn't ready for me to be home yet because she was getting that surprise ready for me. Um, and then I ended up going the next I night. I thought that but... was for the Sum 41 concert that Uncle John came No, to no, because I came home early mm -hmm. and you were expecting me to be gone longer because I was at the show, right? Oh, so, okay. Anyway, um, Alan the Clown had said, I'd love to go see the Catalyst Anniversary show. I would too. That was such a, the Newfound Glory's Catalyst album is such a good album and they finally just got it put out on it. Well, they just released it on vinyl for one, which, which is unfortunate. Well, it's good, but unfortunate because there were, I have a list of vinyls where it's like when that one came out, I was like, oh, come on, I can't buy this one right now. But anyway, um, I would love to get that on vinyl. But anyway, they have it on streaming now as well, which is excellent because it hadn't been for a long time. I just had to address the other comment from Elf Tower that says, I appreciate the positivity, though, because that's one thing that for a while, David, because he's so early on when he would do the videos, there was he would get kind of. I'm not flack. I don't know if that's the right term because he was always so positive about stuff. And he's like, maybe I should have been called the happy critic. <laughs> but, and then there was one video you had put out that he, that he wasn't positive about and he got a lot of backlash. Yeah. Well, it's, the thing is like, everybody's going to have a difference of opinion and that's okay. Like that's the beauty of music. It's so subjective. Yeah. The music is not really like, there is a level of objectivity to music, right? If, if a song's like, sucks like <laughs> if somebody is like just bad like it that's obvious like right Friday, Friday. yeah like some people if a person sings off key and it just doesn't sound good like people can generally agree and have an objective viewpoint but there's some things where it's it's very subjective where one person can hear something and really enjoy it and another person can hear the same thing and just hate it mm -hmm. and that's okay like there's nothing wrong with that and that's why like if a person thinks that something that i like isn't great or they don't like it and that's okay right and that that also brings up the opportunity to have discussions which is exactly what what yeah. this channel is about which is being able to have that music community <laughs> the community of people who love music to be able to have these kinds of discussions yeah. which is awesome so I, I i appreciate elf tower for for you uh, dropping your opinion in the dropping dropping your opinion in the comments um because it's awesome because it, it brings it it sparks uh communication and conversation mm -hmm. And, and that's what we want here, which is excellent. So. See, and that's like about the dynamic with us. He's generally the more positive one. And I'm like the one that normally like critiques things. But then when we were doing Screaming Bloody Murder, I was like, I know how much he loves that album. So I was like very careful because like, it's not that I think it's bad, but they've had better songs, right? So that's all it was. Debatable. And then it's funny <laughs> with the, the, what Alan is saying about so the people don't come to, to Sacramento yeah. as much anymore. Uh, and then he has to, to go to San Francisco. Francisco oh, really? Because 
he grew up in the San Francisco area, and I don't think he went to your first concert until you lived in Florida, right? Yeah. Well, I, people played in San Francisco when I grew up. I just never went. Yeah. It just I never had the money for it. But uh, yeah, uh, Sacramento. That's um, I believe that's where Papa Roach is from, if I remember correctly. See, I grew up outside of Toronto, and so obviously there's tons of stuff, you know, whether it's Broadway shows or rock bands, whatever. It's, you know, it See, was easy. <laughs> San Francisco has a lot of stuff, but when you live, like, the suburbs don't have as much. Like, when you live in the, the suburb areas, like, they have a lot of local stuff. Like, it's not that there is no scene. Um, it's just a lot of the bigger bands are going to play places like San Francisco mm -hmm. um, and in Oakland. And well, I don't I don't really know if anybody goes to Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I thought was funny is after we left Abbotsford. People there was, I guess, shows started. Yeah, happening people there started going because there, they yeah. are, there was a new a newer. Um, Venue. Yeah, thank you. The word just was not coming to me. And I was like, oh, well. Because didn't some 41 play over there at one point? There was somebody that just after we left played there. And you're like, ah, we missed it by like a month. I don't remember. I don't remember who it was. I don't think it was some 41. I don't think they went to Abbotsford. Might have been Gob. Oh, who did he meet the singer of? Uh, Yeah, I met the singer at the grocery store. <laughs> really? That's awesome. Papa Roach. Oh. That's excellent. <laughs> well, I, and I never knew. It's so funny. There's so many bands that were from California that I never knew were actually from California. I remember when I realized that Green Day was from Berkeley, which was what like berkeley oakland area which was you know 45 minutes ish give or take from where i grew up so that was a weird thing to find out <laughs> and then yeah there's so many bands like i had just found out within the last year last two years that papa roach was from sacramento where it's just like wait what really i had no idea that they were that close to where i was at but there's a lot of bands like that that are from those areas that i had no clue about or that i had no clue they were from those areas yeah def music is definitely subjective i'm i'm also fairly opinionated about stuff and i don't know if that comes from coming from like a largely musical family and being into you know theater and just all of that stuff that like i had like so much going on and like my mom like could write like orchestrations like all of that stuff and you know my dad was a drummer and just everybody was musical mm -hmm. in my family and so it's like i have but then i also have my very personal taste in music which is very different than theirs but it's also kind of a, an amalgamation of the stuff that i was brought up with coupled with my own you know bit of I guess flair to it <laughs> but yeah no I definitely I do love does this look infected and Chuck like after going back to those I was they like, were great albums I definitely understand why people I keep saying definitely it's driving me nuts definitely how do I stop saying this um <laughs> but like I understand why those are some of their favorite albums because it's not just the music, right? It's the personalities there, the excitement that you can feel who they are in those mm -hmm. albums, I think, you know, when they were young, energetic, and just there's so much nostalgia attached to that, too. Yeah, you know? well, the, the Does This Look Infected and Chuck era were really good. Like, if you watch, if you go back now even and look at videos uh, of them playing live in that period of time, it was a whole different ball game. Like, the it took me a little bit of getting used to to Derek's mannerisms in the newer era because I was so used to old Derek and I understand a lot of it has to do with his like his health and his, mm -hmm. the physicality and, and stuff like that of that of now. Um, so it took me a little bit of getting used to to kind of become comfortable with his mannerisms. Um, <laughs> but the music has always been fantastic. I've always really loved. Yeah, but that era is the. Does this look infected? And Chuck Air is amazing. See, that's music. funny to me because since I was more used to the newer music videos, watching his older stuff, I was like, this is weird because he's so much more like in your face in the mic kind of thing when he's performing, like when he was younger than yeah. he is now. And it's just, but you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, grow up watching those music videos, right? That was something that was kind of done in retrospective, mm. you know, at post Underclass Hero. So. Yeah, but yeah, he's been obsessed with some 41 like forever. They've so, been my favorite for so long. Like I knew they existed and I knew some of their songs, but I didn't listen to them until after we met. Like like deliberately listen to them, I mean. You yeah. Know. And then she just recently started loving them when we started doing this. Like <laughs> the it's it's yeah, it's it's interesting. Well, it's cuz I I feel like I've gotten to know them, right? Because there's so many like 
all the interviews and everything too. Like it's a different level than just like, you know, listening to a band. It's like, I've like done a ridiculous amount of research. Like a ridiculous the research level she's done is research. insane. Like if there's a Sum 41 video out there, I've, I've watched, probably it. watched like it. I've made a playlist too. Like I've, I've collected a lot of, I guess my favorite favorite um interviews and stuff and i've like put a playlist and i was mm. actually thinking of maybe like releasing that at the end of things like uh, bleh. Bleh. <laughs> so sorry for this like verbal vomit here um every well not maybe not every every um video but i've been trying to post like some of the key interviews on in the mm. descriptions after the videos i gotta take these off because i keep getting like flares from the but then I can't. See. That's why I keep like asking him to do that because it's like I can't see that. But but it's better than being blinded by the light. <laughs> blinded by the light. It's a good song. But, yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's fun actually, like interacting with people on all of this because you know it's one thing to have our our thoughts and opinions, but like I love actually the other side of it and getting to know people mm -hmm. who love this stuff too. Well, it's been it's been it's a nice change because. The our very first live stream that we ever did, we had friends and family, which was cool. And then when we did our first live stream, we weren't sure if anybody was going to show up. And we had Car Life, shout out to Car Life, <laughs> <laughs> um, who showed up and has been has been a faithful faithful uh, uh, person to come and interact with us. And we're very appreciative of that. So it's <laughs> it's been really nice to have everybody here tonight. Um, we have hit an hour in, so we're probably going to go ahead and close out. Oh, think you want to keep, keep talking? I don't know. We can keep talking. That's fine. I'm I'm up for it. Ask the people what do the people want. We're here for you. Well, as long as they're here, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine kicking it and staying staying around. So. The, there's another comment there. I just can't read it. Oh yeah. Uh, earliest that got me interested is uh, when I heard a snippet of what I believe in the movie, Dude Where's My Car. <laughs> I always paid attention to the music in the background. It's, it's been a while since. So See, seen that that's movie. another thing. The music, music and movies. That's one of the things that's like I'm like a big. And we'll just use the that, word again over. Yeah. Um, I love soundtracks and I love when things like that happen. And like even finding out that they did a, like a, a CD version of the like a soundtrack. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. There's a different version <laughs> for the Spider-Man album, even though it wasn't on there. But then in um, Fantastic Four, the original one. They did Noops. Yeah, Noots is in there. And it's just, it's funny, you know, finding all of these little Well, that things. era, Dude Wears My Car, uh, American Pie, like those movie era, like the early 2000s, the soundtracks for that were fantastic because they had a lot of like pop punk and stuff like that um, in those movies that you don't really remember. But then you go back and watch and check it out. It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that was in that, which is awesome because but so it's 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 a lot of fun to look back at movies of that era um and remember what it was like to watch them because it just it had a whole different dynamic to it than movies now do um just because of the soundtrack what songs are in that in american pie 2 i've never seen those movies but um i don't remember uh i, I knew they had a song in there but i don't remember what it was um fat lip yeah oh, okay yeah See, that's that's probably like I think everybody's earliest introduction to some forty one. Fat lip. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's one of their most yeah, well known and into deep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are deep. those are the two that I remember hearing, like over you know the radio at the mall or wherever. <clears throat> I remember like listening to them again, being like, "Oh yeah, I know this song." Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's so funny because I remember a buddy of mine and I when I was first getting into some 41 and he was letting me listen to his different music and I was asking him, Oh, do you have this? He goes, yeah, I have that. I was like, some 41. He goes, no, I don't have fat lip. I was like, what? Why? <laughs> I said, come on. And so I had to get it from a different friend. So mm -hmm. anyway, but yeah, no, some 41 has like, it's been around. I've, I've loved them for so long, but yeah, no, the early two thousands, a lot of the movie soundtracks had a lot of really good, just like pop punk, um and rock songs in the soundtracks and then even if they weren't in the soundtracks them like in the yeah. movies themselves would be on the separate soundtracks of music that were in and inspired by you know whatever the movie is um elf tower just noticed the hoodie i listened to the whole newfound glory discovery late last year uh for the first time oh awesome now that's consistent uh wish some 41 were more like that but hey uh still prefer sums overall 
Awesome. Yeah. The uh, new, I, I love newfound glory. The I'm curious to see what they're going to have going forward. Cause they haven't really done as much lately. They hit, they had released the, um, uh, that acoustic album that they had, that they did last year, a couple years ago at this point, I guess. Um, but I'm curious to see, cause yeah, they were, they're very consistent. And even though their era, their like their music eras, you can really feel a difference in the sound when you listen through it. They are fairly consistent and they were, they're a lot bigger than I realized. Yeah. Um, because I, I grew up listening to them. I started listening to them probably around the same time I started listening to some 41, um, because a buddy of mine had given me their sticks and stones album. And so that was what I listened to mostly growing up was that album in particular with a mix of the other ones thrown in. But they they have definitely been very consistent over the years. But they're the size of them. Like I knew I, there's bands that I knew that I just assumed that some people kind of knew. But anytime they release a vinyl, um, they so they get so sold fast. out so fast. Um, there's a couple that I've gotten where it's we would I'd be ready and I'd like go in nerve -wracking and right we would <laughs> we would purchase it and then the site would crash and they'd be sold out like they are so much bigger than I think a lot yeah. of people realize. Um, they've had such a loyal and steady fan base over the years and it, it, rightfully so. Like their music is really good and it's a lot of fun. It's very catchy and the the lyrics uh, the lyrics are very good as well and they're good performers. I I saw them at Warp Tour one year and they're a lot of fun to watch live. Um, and their music videos are a lot of fun too. Yeah, I think music, uh, sorry, not music. Newfound Glory. <laughs> no. <laughs> so sorry. My brain just like, sometimes it just completely leaves me. Newfound Glory, when you had told me about them, I thought they were like a nobody little tiny band. And so I was really surprised because like with MXPX, I mean, I knew about MXPX forever and I thought they were big. But then when you see like the, you know, the listening stats and comparisons, like I never realized that Newfound Glory was so much They're bigger. huge. They're but so big. That one of the other things I was going to say is like speaking of like consistent music, that's where that thought was going is MXPX is also very consistent. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like... um it just it's it, you can once again you hear them sort of changing but they have their signature sound and i think that with some 41 one of the th reasons that it does change so much is because they are so good at doing so many genres that it was probably hard to peg a genre but then also with people coming in and going out yeah. and you know trying to find their way while touring and doing all of that stuff right because they're a touring band it's yeah. a lot different than people who are like you know strictly recording art or mainly recording artists right it just you have a different way of being able to play with music mm -hmm. and stuff and at, you know at the end of the day it's more about the the show right and i think maybe that's where you know that can kind of come from well when when you what, I'm having such a hard time speaking tonight. One of the things he was saying about 13 Voices is that that was, I think, the first time that they had an album where every single song on the album was done great live. Like, they could play it live. And they they loved that. And it's cool that they're able to, you know, mm. I guess, do that kind of thing. And even though it's some 41, it definitely ebbs and flows throughout the sound. But yeah, Screaming Bloody Murder for me was just so different than everything else. And I think that's kind of like the piece that was like out of place amongst all of them yeah. because there is no punk in that it's just like a i don't know like emo so rock so i don't know <laughs> i the one of the challenges that any band faces is changing their sound um because there is a happy level of changing a sound yeah and some bands can <laughs> there's <pull>. betrayal <laughs> well yeah there's some bands that can pull it off really well and there's some bands that when they go to pull it off it just it doesn't work and it just makes everybody mad um i like personally like i I've always loved Sum 41. I felt that their evolution made sense and that it that they did a really good job with it. But I know there were some people when Underclass Hero came out that they felt betrayed. They just really did, didn't like that album, which is fine. Like like I said, everybody's everybody can have, have an opinion on it, and that's okay because everybody feels differently about music. But a lot of bands, it's hard. Like I know um, Fall Out Boy got a lot of flack um early on earlier on in their career because their sound changed a bit and they were they were dubbed as sellouts um for quite a bit and then they did also do a, a my opinion a even though they're doing seem to be doing okay 
I felt they did a, a career killing move by changing their sound. They went a very much more mm -hmm. pop type sound. Their last album was much better than they had done previously. If I have a review on that. It's not as good as some of these other videos because it was <laughs> earlier on in my reviewing, <clears throat> but you should check that out. And, and yeah, but anyway, their newer album was pretty good, but any band, anytime they change, it's hard because if they go too much change, they may chase away the fans. If they don't change enough, it can get boring. Yeah. And on to the point that Alan said with the music TV, that's one thing I think that's really missing from today and why the music genres has shifted so much is because they're, you know, it's one thing to have YouTube, right? And you can find things and search things, but it's another thing to have those random bits of, you know, music culture more or less thrown yeah. at you through stuff like, you know, MTV, much music, you know, wherever it is that you are in the world, your version of music TV. And, you know, that's one thing that like, whether or not you were allowed to listen to it at home or out at the mall, right? Like it, it definitely broadened people's per like, music tastes, right? Like what they were exposed to and what they could listen to. And it's, you know, that's one of those things that's really missing today is there's not like, you know, random bits mm. of, you know, watch this. Raymond Wing said, it's funny how the change between Chuck and underclass hero split their fan base in two. And with heaven and hell, they will finally unite us again. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a really good point. I like I that makes me really this. happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that's funny so, when you that's an excellent point. It's so good. <laughs> it is. And it's funny when you see the controversy over underclass hero, because for yeah. me, I still think that sounds like some 41 where a screaming bloody murder was just like not. And it's funny that that's the one that's really split people on. But then I've also noticed in the last few years, when you go onto different threads, a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, I actually like this album now that I've gone back and listened yeah. to it. Well, it's a lot better than I think than a lot of people remember, I think. And it's one of those things that when you go back and check it out, I think I remember when I re-listened to it because I remember thinking, oh, this is a good album. And but it didn't really impress it didn't impress me much. <laughs> um, don't impress me. But I remember <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I remember going back and watching, er, watching, listening to it again and thinking, wow, this is actually a really amazing album. Mm -hmm um and it's it's definitely an underrated one for sure well and i love going through all of the history too like and seeing i guess that's the difference right like if you listen to the albums sporadically through time and like i can see why people would be so divided but when you listen to it back to back and you're getting that full story and you're learning all of the weird intricacies of why things changed and just like their personal and like their personal experiences and their <laughs> musical experiences, their evolution of sound and, you know, the, it yeah. morphing and changing, it, it really does make sense. And you can see that even though it changes, it's consistent at the same time because it's coming from a place of genuineness. Yeah. Right. Like where they're at in that moment. Well, and because Derek produced Underclass Hero, I think that's also where you get a bit of the sound because that's where that type of sound was where he was sitting at that point in time because he had also produced a couple songs for Avril Lavigne at the time because I think they were married at the time, um, produced a couple songs for Avril Lavigne's uh, Best Damn Thing album. And if you listen to the songs that he produced, they're similar in production style to Underclass Hero. Hers are a bit more poppy, but the it you can tell that he produced it. It, was, it has a similar type feel to it, and I think that was one of the things too. Because the previous albums, people who love Chuck and Does This Look Infected, which are great albums, they were produced by somebody different. So this was more of Derek coming out and kind of trying something new, doing something different. Whereas when you go from that to Screaming Bloody Murder, where he was in a different place in his life. His divorce was finished. He was in a darker place. Personally, um, his production style of how he wanted the album to sound was different. And it was almost, I love the record, but it's its almost like he was lost at that point. And when you watch some of the videos of them live and the music videos and whatnot from that period of time, you can tell that he was unwell and was going through a very hard time. But then that period between Screaming Bloody Murder and 13 Voices where he was in the hospital, Steve-O left, all these things were going wrong and it seemed that Sum 41 wasn't going to go on. That rebirth that he had, mm -hmm. he came out on the other side looking so much healthier and you got a more, you came back to a more vibrant type sound. Yeah. Granted, different from what they had previously, but definitely they revitalized, I yeah. guess you could say. Yeah. The um, 
the the thing about walking disaster, I was actually about to pull up my phone to listen to the first 30 seconds. Then I realized my phone is streaming. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I love that song. And I love the music video for that as well. <laughs> so good. With the little robot guy going through everything is cute. I remember. I when love Mar that. See, I love all of everything, even Mapu Bell. I love that stupid little song. <laughs> Who's <was> stupid? <laughs> like I know people don't, but like when you look at it from the whole, like it just—it's such a good story, and it's just you know, it's it's quirky, it's fun, it's dumb, but it's you know, it's musically. I actually you know I enjoy it too. It's fun, but. Yeah, yeah. I love that album. I remember when March of the Dogs came out. I think I said this in the review that we did. The like it was it was exciting because like, oh, they're gonna do new music. And it came out. I don't remember how I listened to it. It might have been LimeWire. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, and I remember hearing it and just I loved that song and being excited for the album based on that song because I listened to that song on repeat, repeat. Because at the time, too, right? Streaming was not a thing, except I, I think Napster was defunct at that point. Not completely because it's a legitimate business now, but at the time I think it had kind of been run down and not really used anymore. I could be wrong on that. Um, but anyway, uh, iPods, CDs, those were how people listened to music at that point in time. So the amount of songs that you had to listen to on repeat wasn't as much as what you have now where you have streaming and you can listen to anything mm -hmm. and everything. Right. So I listened to March of the Dogs over and over and over again. I love that song. And to me, that song is still very, very nostalgic when I listen to it. And that song makes me really happy. So it's, it's a really good song. Yeah. And Walking Disaster. I always love the music video for that. <laughs> like that's and I've I've identified with that song at some point. Well, and it's funny, too, because when you see that album versus the one we did this week, 13 Voices, like they really go hand in hand and you can see like just the transformation of Derek through walking, uh, not walking disaster through underclass hero and then having that total downfall and then coming back with 13 voices. And like, that's what I was saying in the review. It's almost like a more mature, fully realized sequel to underclass hero. Like when you look at it in that like story, like granted, 13 Voices is not telling a story from beginning to end in the same sense that Underclass Hero is, but it's still following like Derek's personal journey mm -hmm. because everything was written chronol everything that he wrote was written chronologically on the album. And I think that's really cool. But it's it's cool how many of those songs parallel and almost complete the songs on yeah. underclass heroes and specifically March of the dogs was one of the ones that to me kept coming up in some of those things thematically for underclass hero. I think the song that I, I really enjoyed that I had kind of not really noticed the first time I had listened through it, but when I went back to it was um, confusion and frustration in modern times, that song That's is really good, good. I love that song. Um, it's hard for me to pick what my favorite song from that album is uh, usually when it comes to some 41 albums, I can't usually pick one song. That's my favorite. I usually have to pick two or three that are my top songs. And that's yeah. definitely my top songs. Walking Disaster is in my top, um, Confusion, Frustration and March of the Dogs are probably, probably my top three on that album. Yeah. I think with, with Underclass Hero and 13 Voices, I would say that most of the songs on both of them are kind of like, you know, timeless and relevant and, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons that, you know, I like those two albums so much is because of the way they work together. But it's also they're so relatable in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. like those songs, whereas Screaming Bloody Murder is more of like a dark period of time. Right. Whereas I think everybody can relate to, you know, at least one song on 13 Voices. Right. Just because that whole, you know, the ebb and flow of. Yeah everything and there's the positives there's the negatives there's the working through things and well and even songs like war i think it's that can be a positive or negative song depending on which way you're looking at it too right um you can be utilizing it as a way of <coughs> excuse me um in a positive sense as moving towards something that you're working towards or in a negative sense trying to break away from from your past right yeah, Confusion and Frustration in Modern Times is, like, I love that song because of just how relevant it is. Like, even the title alone, right? It's just so, like, 
I mean, how many of us have been like feeling that way over the last few years with everything going on, right? And it's just, uh, I just, I love that album because it's, <laughs> it's so relevant. Well, it's timeless because yeah. like we said in the review, like it's, it's a definitely a stick it to the man type album that you can utilize really when talking about any level of government that you're just distasteful of, regardless of which side of the left or right or whatever you that you're on. smack me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, I think that's one of the things I like about it because at the time it was written specifically as a screw you to George Bush, whereas now you can to whoever's in power, you can still mm -hmm. utilize it and it doesn't it doesn't date it specifically for that period in time. It can still be used today. Yeah. And it's funny how he was more specific back then because there's the song coming up on next week's that everybody said was about someone specific president and it actually wasn't yeah that's a good song that's a very they're all really good yeah. songs i <laughs> well and that was another one that in 13 voices he references which which song was that uh which song that i, I noticed know. that in was it in 13 voices yeah but i don't remember which song no i mean the song 13 voices i don't because he, he he it's or was it Breaking the Chain? Where I've lost count of all my blessings. He references three songs in one verse. And it was it was Count Your Last Blessing, Pieces, and... What was the last one? Oh, I can't remember now. And it was just... It was so good because I've... You know, I've often wondered, right? Like, if there would be callbacks or realizations of things that he had sung about before and how they affected... Uh, things after his hospitalization and it was neat seeing all of this you know all of this show up in 13 voices i'm just checking for the you can keep talking i'm just checking for count your last blessing reference i can't i can't remember what song it was now um it hold on. Th if i look at the it wasn't 13 voices no, if i look at this I'll but anyway back remember what that was well and he there they do a lot of callbacks like the concept of who's to blame comes up again and again we're all to blame uh where is the other there's a few a couple different times on the different albums where they reference oh it's war who's to blame <laughs> i should have known that war it was war it was war it was war all along oh, no. what is what it good for songs? absolutely nothing uh, now I lost. Oh, that's letter? the wrong. I just flipped to the wrong Song side again. Song is war. Yeah. Sorry, technical difficulties <laughs> with my brain. <laughs> um, it's so hard to read his his writing. Now, where did I just saw it? Now I can't see it. I'm losing count of all my blessings with all that I've done. It's too late. I can't take back all that I've become. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. A definitive reference to war. Or no, to, to war is a definitive reference yeah. to. And then pieces. The yeah, there was there was a few of them, and I was just like, oh. <clears throat> well, they're really yeah no, they're really good at that, which is what, <coughs> excuse me. So, but yeah. <sighs> well, this has been good. This has been fantastic. Yeah. It's fun having people interact. <laughs> And then it goes quiet. Okay. Yeah, I know it's been it's been very good. It's been it's been nice. The yeah. it's been it's been yeah. <laughs> so but. yeah, but make sure you stay tuned because we do have some exciting stuff coming up. Yes, very but exciting. I'm but... getting pretty drowsy, so <sighs> my brain is definitely not functioning properly right now. I'm not sure when we're gonna announce what it is that we have coming up, but it's specifically this particular thing which is, is I, I can't wait yeah. anyway it's really exciting it's, it's really exciting it's really so exciting. keep your eyes open because it'll be it'll be awesome and we'll talk about it eventually in the live but um so yeah so i think i think we're gonna go ahead and shut down for the night yeah um, almost like an said, hour and a half in thanks for joining us guys yes. this has been awesome for everybody shout yeah. out to car life wherever you are for our og og, yeah. OG, OG <laughs> and alan for joining us again thank you for coming back yeah. And uh, those who are here new this week, we look forward to seeing you next week. Hopefully, yeah. we do we do lives every Saturday night, 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, we release our videos on Friday night, which is what we started doing, and then we go live on Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern 
E E E yeah. D T is I guess now, now it's Eastern, yeah, Eastern Daylight Time. But I just say E S T because that's what I Toronto time. <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> so if you're unsure, just you can check. And we Toronto will still time. keep continuing doing the live streams after the series is done. We'll just yeah, yeah the next series, the next uh, histories will be uh, Tenacious D. So. Yes, best of me. I love that oh, song. Oh, so good. That that's song. a that's a great apology song. Yes, it really is. It's it's an amazing that see that's where he did some of let's see now I'm getting into things again. He did some of his best like love song writing on that album. Yeah. Well, and that song's good. There's times where I've I've um uh like ballads. Sorry, it's the, what I'm trying ballads, to say. Ballads. Yeah, ballads. There's times where I've I've been a jerk and I've had to apologize. <laughs> and that song is an amazing song to be able to be like, hey, I, I'm sorry. And then you put that song on and it's just like just let's listen to the lyrics, honey. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah, it's it's such a great song, and it's well, that was really kind of. Well, I guess they did pieces was kind of a ballad sort of deal in Chuck, but this was really where they really kind of took yeah. off with that that piece of it. it. Was was an underclass hero, and Best of Me is just such a fantastic yeah. song. And like I said before, that whole album would be great as a musical. Yeah. And then following up with 13 voices kind of like worked through there as like the character development later on. It would be amazing. Well, like I said, I mean, if if Green Day can make it to uh, See, I Broadway, didn't even know that. That's what, yeah. before. I'd be curious to see that the the American Idiot Green Day's American Idiot on Broadway. I'd be very curious to see punk see rock musical. Like. Yeah. It'd be amazing. It'd be awesome. I would want to be in that. <laughs> So, but anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and shut it down for this week and we'll hopefully see you all here next week. Yeah. Thank you for joining same us time, so same much. Place. Same time, same place, 10 p.m. Toronto time, we'll say, <laughs> and then we'll see you here next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.